Welcome to Unit 2, Lab 3, Page 1, What's a Predicate? In this lab, we're going to work to create a word puzzle solver that can search through a long list of words and report back words that have specific characteristics that we're looking for. So for example, if we have a list of random words, we may want to find all the words that have maybe three letters or words that start with the letter T or end in the letter S. And in order to do this, we're going to have to look at each word and determine if it meets the characteristic we're looking for. The way that predicates work is that they ask a question and they report back either true or false for the condition. Now the question that they're asking isn't really to the user, it's like a question that they're asking themselves. So for example, if we look at a word and ask, does this word have three letters, the computer will be able to figure that out and the answer will always be true or false. So if the word starts with the letter T, once again, the response will either be true or false. Every time the answer is true, we can program our computer to do something specific. Now, in order to do all this, we're going to have to learn how to use these special blocks called predicates. And a predicate is just a block that reports either true or false. And in computer science, true or false is known as a Boolean value. In SNAP, any block with a hexagonal shape or a six-sided shape is considered to be a predicate. The predicates can be used in conditional statements such as if else or repeat until and conditional statements can read almost like a sentence. So for example, if your homework is done, then you can play League of Legends. Else or otherwise, keep working on your homework. That might be a conditional statement that some of your parents might set up for you. And in that example, done with homework is the predicate block because you can see it has that hexagon shape or hexagonal shape. If else in yellow is the conditional block, and play League of Legends or keep working on homework are the command blocks. We've also seen some conditionals and predicates when we use the repeat until block before. The way that this conditional statement reads is that we're going to keep working on homework until the predicate done with homework reports back true. Then and only then do we continue out of the conditional to play League of Legends. All right, the first thing you got to do is start a new project and save it as U2L3 predicates. And I've already gone ahead and done that. So let's go on to for you to do number two. We have to create a script that lets our mouse write on the stage in two colors, depending on the mouse's position on the stage. So to do that, we can start thinking about the blocks that we're going to use. We're going to need the change color block. So in the pen palette, we can set pen color to a specific color. We're going to need a couple of those because we're going to have to change the color eventually, right? We're also going to need to figure out the position of the mouse on the stage. So if we go into the motion palette and we drag in either the X position or the Y position blocks, I'm not sure which one we're going to use just yet, but I'll bring both of them in just so we have them there available. If we play this short animation on the curriculum page, you can see that the mouse is changing color when it goes below a certain value and that value is probably zero on the y-axis. So we don't really need x-position actually. We could just throw that back out. We're also going to need an if-else conditional statement to figure out when to change the pen color. So let's go over to the control palette and drag in an if-else. Where is it? There it is. Okay. If we think about this like a sentence, a conditional statement like a sentence, we can think of it like this. If the y-position of the cursor is above zero, then let's set the pen color to red. Else, or otherwise, let's set the pen color to blue. So if, if the Y position is greater than a certain value, let's make it uh, red. Otherwise, else, let's set it to blue. All right, now we need to create the predicate that will respond to this correctly. And it's suggested that we use one of the equality or inequality predicates that are built into SNAP. So let's go over to the operators palette and let's say that if the Y position is greater than zero, then we're going to set the pen color to red. Otherwise, it's going to set the pen color to blue. So if I click on this, right now, the way that it works is it's only checking it. It's only checking this conditional statement when I click on it. So if I have the cursor up high over here where Y is definitely greater than zero, if I click on this if statement, then you can see that it's become red. And if I lower it down here below zero and I click on it, it becomes blue. So this isn't exactly how we want to do this because we want it to follow the mouse around like we did in a lab a long time ago. 
If you remember back in Unit 1 Lab 5, we made a script to get the sprite to follow the mouse and to continually follow the mouse. So to do that, we used a forever block and we had that forever block forever go to the X position and the Y position of the mouse. So mouse X, mouse Y. And so if I click on this, it's going to forever follow the mouse. But you'll notice that it's not changing colors as I move the mouse up and down on the stage. And the reason for that is it's never checking to see what the Y position value is. So what we want to do is maybe add this if statement inside of the forever block. So it's forever following the mouse and it's forever also checking to see the position of the mouse. So let me click on it, now it should be running, and now you can see that it forever is changing colors. When I move the mouse greater than zero on the stage, it becomes red, and when I move it down, it becomes blue. Now all we have to do to get this drawing is put the pen down. So let me put the pen down first. I don't really need to put it in the forever block because I don't need to keep putting the pen down every single step or every single like millisecond. I just can put it down initially and now it should forever follow the block and you guys can see that it's drawing on the stage. And I think in number three, you can improve on this to have it so that it only draws on the stage when the mouse is clicking down. If I click down on the mouse right now, I'm picking up and I'm kind of like dragging this sprite which might not be what you want if you're trying to get it to draw only when you're clicking down. So I'll let you guys figure that out because it is an if there's time. I'm gonna move on to number four and for you to do. We have to build a predicate that tells whether an input number is between two other numbers. So we can use the same inequality or equality predicates to accomplish this. So let's make a block and call it is blank, so let me just call that is input value, uh, between, uh, let's see, this is going to be between the lower bound and upper bound. So I'm just going to use that, and that's just what came to my head as I wrote this down. But before I hit OK, I'm going to make sure to put a percentage sign in front of lower bound, in front of upper bound, and in front of the input value. By putting the percentage sign, it'll create the parameters by itself automatically. Now this is going to be a predicate. So I'm going to click on this predicate block and I want to put it inside of the operators palette because that is the color that they use in the lab. I'm going to hit OK. And there we go, is input value between lower bound and upper bound. And my parameters are already created. I am going to change them to make to give them a type so that Snap knows that they should be numbers. So I'm going through, I'm clicking on each parameter and I'm selecting that it's going to be a number. So that way no one can type in like any text in here or any weird characters. It has to be numbers only. Perfect. And now what we want to do is we want to report back true if the input value is between or is greater than the lower bound and is less than the upper bound. So let's do that. Let's bring in the uh, Let's see, an if else. And so what we're going to do is, we're going to use a few, a couple of reports at least. So we have to check our input value. So we have to check to see if the input value is, let's see, it has to be greater than the lower bound and less than the upper bound. So input value is going to be, let me just put it, set it up right there. There you go. It has to be greater than the lower bound for this to report back true and it has to be less than the upper bound for this to report back true. Now we could put both of these inside of like a nested if. I can bring in another if statement and check to see if the input value is greater than the lower bound and then check to see if the input value is less than the upper bound. But that's kind of inconvenient and kind of like unnecessary. Or we can use the AND boolean operator that's also found in the operators palette to accomplish the same thing. The way that AND works is that both of these predicates that are placed inside have to be true for AND to report back true. So the only way that this entire predicate reports back true is if both parts are true. If one part is false but the other part is true, the entire thing is false. And this is perfect. So we can throw this in our IF conditional and if that happens to be true, then we can report back true. Otherwise, we're going to report false. So I'm going to bring in the report false and that should do it. I think that should make our predicate work correctly. I'm going to hit apply and I'm going to play around with it just a little bit. 
I'm going to try is 5 between 2 and 9. And when I click on it, it says true. Now, if I raise the 2 to a 6, is 5 between 6 and 9? It reports back false. So it looks like it's working correctly. I wonder what happens if I do is 5 between 5 and 9. And it reports back false because you can't use the exact number that you're checking. I'll leave it up to you to figure out how to use this block to write on the stage in three colors. And for you to do number six, we're asked to play around with the mod reporter block. Now, the way that the mod block works, it's also found in the operator's palette, but the way that it works is that it reports back the remainder of the division of the first input by the second input. So for example, if you do 17 mod 5 and then click on the reporter block, it's going to report back 2. The reason for that is that 5 goes into 17 three times. So if you do 5 times 3, that's 15. And you're going to have a remainder of 2. 17 minus 15 equals 2. So mod reports back the remainder. If you think back to like third grade or fourth grade when you were learning division and you like put a little R and then put like the, the number that you had as the remainder, maybe when you were doing long division, uh, this is the exact same thing. It's just reporting back that remainder value. So what we have to do in part B is to define the blank divisible by blank predicate using mod. So I'm going to start making that block. It's going to be another predicate and it's going to be an operator's palette. So let's say is, let's do percentage first value divisible by a percentage second value, question mark. Oh, actually, do I have to, no, I think that'll work. Oh, <laughs> what happens is that it put the question mark inside of the input value's name or the, the parameter's name. So let me just create a question mark outside of it as title text. There we go. Did I mess up the, the same thing over here? Oh, it probably did the same thing over here. Yes, it put the question mark inside of upper bound when I wanted it outside of it in the title text and not in the parameter. So I could just fix that really quickly. I didn't even notice I did that. All I got to do is just do a quick little fix. And there I have the question mark in the predicate. So what I want to do is I want to report back if the, let's do this, if the first value is divisible by the second value, then what's going to happen is there should be a remainder of zero, right? So if the remainder is zero, then we can report back true. It is divisible by that value. So let me use these values. If the first value mod the second value, so divide those, if it, equals zero. So let me bring in another predicate over here. If you do this and the answer is zero, then that means that it is divisible. So you should report back true. Let me just quickly go over here and bring this into the if statement. So if that's true, then we want to report back true. Else, we're going to report false. So we're going to divide the first value by the second value. And because it says mod, we're going to look at the remainder. And if the remainder is zero, that means it's evenly divisible by the second value. So I'm just going to change this again to make sure that Snap knows that these are supposed to be numbers so that you can type in like a letter. There we go. And I think that's good. Now this code will work, but there is a shorter way of writing the same thing. What we could do is we can realize that this predicate right here, first value mod second value, this is going to report back true or false itself. So we don't even need that if statement. All we have to do is report back first value mod second value equals zero, and this by itself will report back the same answer. So this will work correctly, but this is like shorthand. This is like a little bit more advanced than using an if else. If else is much more readable, so I'm actually going to stick with that. Just because anyone looking at my code right now will be able to understand, oh, I guess if it's divisible evenly, then it's going to report back true. Otherwise, it'll report back false. And the other way would work. I just wanted to show it to you for a few seconds, just so you guys can see that there is another way of doing this. I'm going to hit apply and hit OK, and I just completed number six. Finally, in number seven, we have to use this divisible predicate that we just made to test whether an input is even, divisible by two. So 
all we have to do is right click make a block and let's call this even question mark even question mark and let's just call it the uh, the input number or input value that's fine input value and it's going to be a predicate and I'm gonna hit OK so even is going to take in a number and let me just make sure I give it a type of number and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my mod block uh, not mod block what am I doing I'm gonna use my is divisible by block there we go and I'm gonna achieve this input value is divisible by 2 and if it is it's going to report back true and we can test it out I just hit apply hit OK and we can test it out by putting in negative 22 and it says true And if I make this negative 23 it should say false if I make this 0 it should be true 1 should be false 2 should be true 3 should be false 4 should be true and so on so our block works correctly so this is one way of doing it. We also probably could have used the, uh, the mod block with the uh, equality operator over here, but that's too much for one video. All right, I will see you guys in the next video.